live music and promotion. Hello, this is Marilyn Brown here with New York New Rock TV, and we're here with Hilly Crystal, the owner of CBGB's during the 20th anniversary. Hilly, how did you get started uh, with CBGB's? How did I get started? <coughs> well, I decided to do a, um, a country bluegrass uh, blues uh, place over here on the east side uh, on the Bowery. And, uh, that's how I get started. I guess you hear all the telephones in the background. We're, we're busy during the 20-year anniversary. Yeah. But that's what I intended to do because I thought 20 years ago that, uh, that uh, this kind of music was getting increasingly popular. And what I found uh, was uh, a lot of uh, rock bands who had no place to do their own music and they were practicing in their lofts and their basements and uh, and so that's basically what happened. This is what it ended up being, a place for new rock bands. What were some of the other clubs 20 years ago? Well, when I started, there was absolutely no other club. Uh, Max's had closed down. They had changed ownership, so they were closed for about a year. And uh, I was the only rock club that was happening. And. Uh, then a few months after, I think uh, Max has uh, opened or reopened, and then there was always another club opening or closing, you know. But basically, until the late 70s, uh, when we had clubs like the Mud Club and Hurrahs and a number of others opened for a short period of time, I was the only club. Wow. Um, you had a financial problem uh, a few years ago. The word was you had to raise money to keep CBGBs. What happened and how did you save the club? I don't remember having one financial problem. I remember it seems I have uh, one all the time. <laughs> but uh, at one point, I think uh, the sons of the original owners came in and they tripled my rent and that became a problem so it was a serious problem at that point so I, I that we had a benefit and uh, of course there was another time when uh, the sound system was stolen so that was another time but there's always something I mean it's very it's not easy doing business in this city when did you add the pizzeria and the gallery how did that come about well the pizzeria I well, I wanted to have another place where you could have <coughs> some food, I mean, a light, light fare, uh, <coughs> when you didn't have to go someplace where you didn't have to hear a loud rock band, uh, and that you could relax in something where the customers, so I started that about three, four years ago, also with selling records and uh, strings and accessories for, for musicians, and t-shirts and things like that. And as far as the gallery, that started, I opened that about three years ago. I made it into a gallery uh, with the idea of, of course, uh, having emerging artists, young, new, new artists, um, where we have a show, art show every month, sometimes a single artist uh, or sometimes groups. And, and most of them are from the area, and we have everything from fine art, sculpture, uh, photos, uh, poster art, uh, and some very worthwhile uh, uh, yes, artists are, are displayed there. Also, it's, it's a place where we have improv and poetry and spoken word and um, other kinds of acoustic and, and forms of jazz and, and many other kinds of music other than hard rock. How would you say the rock scene has changed over the last 20 years? Uh, do you have many, many hours? I don't know. I think it's ever-changing, <coughs> just like our, our whole social economy changes. I think, uh, uh, I don't know if you can say it 
it's grown up, I'm sure, uh, uh, as far as marketing and many other things, it has grown, but the uh, scene as far as new music, I think, uh, is just ever evolving. I think when, when CBs started and became important for the music that it represented, uh, it was back to basics. Uh, I guess some people called a lot of it punk, but you had groups like the Talking Heads and the Ramones and everything. I think it was back to basic form. I think then there was a, a new, literally a new wave of, of uh, musicians, artists that were uh, learned to play their instruments so that they, they could express themselves. So. It was an emerging of, of, of a whole new feeling of music. So that grew into, went in many different directions. You had, um, um, I think, uh, your, your, your uh <coughs> groups like Television and the Ramones and, um, and the Talking Heads uh, uh, were, became a catalyst for other bands like the B-52s like the uh, uh, punk uh, in, in, uh, in the UK, the Sex Pistols, uh, Clash, and many others. And I think it uh, eventually, with, with, of course, Blondie, who was a kind of pop punk, you had, uh, um, um, you had Patti Smith, who was, a, who was a poet, I guess you would call her, at least they called her a punk poet. So that um, I think using these people, I think uh, these artists, uh, uh, it, it went in many directions and, and it evolved into, um, I think, I mean, actually if you look at the artists through the years, it, it, it just uh, changed, it just broadened the, the uh, you know, that's all there is. The B-52s, incidentally, are playing here uh, January 25th and 26th, and that is sold out, is it? Oh, yes. Ah, I would imagine. Um, ten years ago, uh, bands could make money playing in New York City. How come not anymore? Why can't they? Well, not, not, a significant, not as significant as it was ten years ago. Do you agree on that? I don't know. I know some bands take a lot of money out of here more than they did <laughs> ten years ago. Really? No, I don't know if they can make money. I know ten, fifteen years ago it was easier living. I think uh, I'd say fifteen years ago you could get an apartment for two, three hundred a month. Mm -hmm. Now you have to pay six, seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand for a studio. <laughs> for a studio. So, but I think. Uh, the money is getting ever, ever larger as far as what the bands take from me, anyway. I don't know anything else. What excites you musically today? Uh, well, what excites me is what always excited me when you see something new and interesting and exceptional. And I think there are, you know, a lot of bands that fit into that, uh, and I'm talking about today being in the last uh, few months, uh, there are bands like, uh, at the gallery we found a band like Cole's Soul Coughing. Soul Coughing is uh, a band here called uh, um, Fossil. And there was a band that played with Living Color. What was the band? That Screaming Headless Torsos. Yeah, great, yeah, great yeah, band. There's yeah. another one. So these are three exciting bands that I've just heard in the last year that I think are, are, are going places, starting to. That's very interesting. Um, what are some of your hobbies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, not listening to rock. <laughs> I make a hobby out of not listening to rock what when I have to. Oh, no. um, what do I listen to? Well, I do almost anything. I love Theater, movies, if I have a chance, I read books, magazines, newspapers, classical music. Um, I think 
The kind of music I listen to out of here is mostly classical music. How many uh, calls and packages do you receive a day? Well, I think we get about 40 or 50 cassettes a week. And calls, we get hundreds a day. Hundreds. After 20 years, what do you feel you have accomplished? Well, I think being here 20 years, I don't know if it's an accomplishment. I think, I think it's um, probably important because uh, the way people feel uh, in other parts of the country, other parts of the world. I think, I think it, the fact that we're here uh, gives inspiration to young musicians, young artists, uh, to do their own thing, to, that they can make it, that they can start from nothing and work hard, and if they have a little luck and a lot of hard work and something to offer, that they can be a success within the field of music. And but just by being here and keeping it going. If you had it to do all over again, would you? <laughs> Obviously, we would never lead our lives exactly. I don't think, I think most people wouldn't. I mean, my life, personally, uh, I don't know. But as far as the club, I'm sure there are different things I would have done. I don't know what they are, but uh, I don't look back. Basically, I like to look for today and tomorrow. All right, Hilly, um, who's playing for your 20th anniversary, and who has played? I know there were some special shows in December. Well, in December we had um, Lemonheads, Living Color, Helmet, uh, from Live. Year Live, we had uh, Mink DeVille from years ago, The Dictators, The Shirts, um, Jesus, so many bands, I can't think of them all. We had literally 110, 120 bands in December. And uh, in January, we're picking up a number of bands who were now not able to play. We had David Byrne then, Joan Jett. Here we have Wasabi, B-52s, um, uh, Anthrax, with some of the bigger bands. Hilly, thanks so much for, uh, for talking with us. CBGB's 20th anniversary, 315 Bowery Street. This is Marilyn Brown from New York, New Rock TV. New York, New Rock.